Welcome everybody, college basketball action. We're joined once again with Ross Benjamin on the underdog value ticket. Uh, had a day off yesterday, it was a small slate, but Ross has been absolutely on fire for us. 21, 14, and one. And let's not forget, 17 out of those 21 are outright victories. It's hard enough picking an underdog with points, let alone an outright win. So it's very impressive, and let's not forget, we're five and one with Ross's picks the last two Saturdays. So I know one thing, I'm gonna be looking at what he's got today, and uh, if I jump aboard, which I probably will, I'm gonna cash some tickets as well. Ross, thanks again for being back with us. Uh, I know you're not one to toot your own horn or look in the rear view mirror, but congratulations on the job you're doing for our viewers. We certainly appreciate it. We've got three big uh, games on slate that you like today in the underdog value and we'll break them down one at a time starting with Texas who we both have touched on we like the coach here Shaka Smart doing a great job getting five and a half points going to Iowa State today uh, what are your thoughts on this and what is the facts that that really like uh, that you like Texas so much getting those points today well, first and foremost, thank you for the kind words, Mike, and let's keep this rolling. Uh, you know, here's a situation where I have to be careful here because uh, I always say don't fall in love with the team just mm. because they've won for you a couple of times. You know what I mean, Mike? Yep, sure we have do. a tendency to do that. But looking at this objectively and looking at just this particular matchup, again, we have a Texas team that's won seven of their last nine. They are coming off a loss. But boy, oh boy, what an effort at Oklahoma this past week in a three-point defeat, easily covering as a nine-point underdog, mm. right down to the wire type of game. And they held Oklahoma to a season-low 40% shooting from the field in just 63 points. And that's nothing new for a Texas team that's been outstanding defensively over their last five games, holding opponents to 58 points per contest. 38% shooting from the field, a lot of momentum. And they say teams take on the personality of their head coach. And that's exactly what's going on here in Austin. Uh, this is a Texas team right now that's playing with a nice blend of poise, confidence, and uh, tenacity. And, and you, you can't beat those three elements uh, when, when a team is riding the wave of momentum they are right now. And then they're facing an Iowa State team that's all of a sudden become a bit vulnerable, Mike. I mean, they say sometimes uh, a, a wounded animal can be very dangerous. Well, Iowa State is definitely wounded right now. One and three straight up in ATS in their last four games. They've been getting dominated on the glass, uh, giving uh, opponents second chance opportunities. It's really hindered them of late. I'm going to take the points here again with the Texas Longhorns plus five and a half over Iowa State. Yeah, and as you alluded to, I also looked at that Iowa State with the rebounding. That's really, really hurt them. And I think one thing also, Ross, you know, a wounded animal can be dangerous, yes. But this is let's not forget, this team is under a first-year head coach, and it takes time to put all that together, all right? And I know Shaka Smart is new in Texas as well, but they're buying what he is selling. And some people might say, oh, Texas coming off that big emotional loss, even though they were in there against Oklahoma, that might have drained them. Not, I don't think so at all. I think if anything, it works the opposite way. I think their confidence is continuing to build and build and build. And again, that's that Shaka Smart effect it's wearing off on that team and it's a good thing i like that play viewers you heard it texas plus the five and a half at iowa state now another interesting game is the second one ross gonzaga getting six points okay against an smu team that literally just got outplayed from start to finish recently what are your thoughts on this game and uh how come gonzaga is really kind of grabbing your attention in this one the key here for me when handicapping this game is motivation uh, you got a Gonzaga team that's 20 and five on the season, Mike, yet they're in desperate need of a quality non-conference win. And this game today would certainly qualify under that heading. Uh, Gonzaga is uh, no longer the lock to win the Big West tournament in March like they've been in years past with St. Mary's looming and waiting. Uh, now you're looking at an SMU team, as you alluded to, tumultuous season thus far although they started 17 and 0 they don't uh, they're not uh, eligible excuse me for the postseason because of NCA rules violations they've had to endure 
a suspension of their head coach. They've seen two players leave the team during the course of the season. In addition, once their undefeated season went by the wayside, they've dropped three of their last five games. They also, in their previous game, lost their first game at home this season against Tulsa. And boy, oh boy, they're just running out of motivational tools to keep them going. Uh, and, you know, as I alluded to, no postseason aspirations where Gonzaga needs this game as an insurance policy for an at-large bid in case they do not win the Big West tournament. I'm going to take Gonzaga here plus the six over SMU. Yeah, I like that play. And, you know, a lot of people may say, oh, the, you know, being out of the tournament's not that big of a deal. I, that's horseshit. You know, that gets into the players' minds. And I believe as the season goes on, SMU's going to lose more and more interest. And therefore, that's going to relate to losing more and more games. And another thing I like, Gonzaga's got four players last time out that were in double digits. So they know how to spread the ball out. Last game against Tulsa, SMU depended on one player, and it just did not work. So I don't know. Larry Brown's got his hands full. This line surprises me. Um, I like it. You know, you hear it, viewers. Gonzaga getting six, a team that really needs a quality win, uh, and they're going to get it today, I believe. So I think it's a, it could be just an outright victory. But as Ross always says, hey, we'll take those six points as an insurance policy. Now, the last game is interesting, Ross. Colorado State getting seven. All right, at UNLV, I got to tell you, this is one I'm, I'm wondering where you're getting uh, your, your confidence in Colorado State. Not saying that it's not there. I'm just looking forward to your breakdown because I think UNLV might be kind of turning a corner here. What are your thoughts on this game and how come you like Colorado State getting the seven? That's a valid question, Mike. I mean, obviously you're looking at UNLV, you would think it's the more talented team on paper. And that very well may be the case. But you know what? Uh, the t more talented team doesn't always win. And in addition, the more talented team always doesn't cover a seven-point spread. Mm -hmm. If you look at UNLV, uh, similar to SMU, they've had a bit of a tumultuous season. Uh, after losing in early January at Wyoming, head coach Dave Rice resigns. They look to be a rejuvenated team at that point by winning their next three games in a row after Rice's resignation. But since then, they've regressed again. They've lost four of their last six. Yes, they are coming off a win in their previous game, but that was against Mountain West cellar dweller San Jose State, and they narrowly escaped with a three-point home win in that contest as a large 14-and-a-half-point underdog, or favorite, excuse me. Now, Colorado State coming up playing three strong games in a row. They did lose at San Diego State, but took that game right down to the wire. And last I checked, San Diego State is the leader in the Mountain West Conference and a red-hot team right now. And the Rams lost that game by just two, easily covering as an 11.5-point underdog. And they've coming off back-to-back, straight-up in ATS wins in their last two games. I like the momentum here of Colorado State. I don't like the mental state right now of UNLV. I'm going to take the points here with Colorado State plus the seven over UNLV. Yeah, and Colorado State, they're four and three, you know, against the spread on the road. UNLV, five and six against the spread at home, so there's no real advantage for UNLV there. And, yeah, like you touched on with that San Diego State team, Fisher's got them boys playing very good ball. So, you know, Colorado State has a lot to hold their head up for. So, okay, I like it also. Viewers, you hear it today. Three games. Cash your underdog ticket once again with Red Hot Ross Benjamin. Texas plus five and a half. Gonzaga plus six. And Colorado State. Eight, getting seven. Hey, Ross, thanks a lot, my friend. I look forward to getting back with you again on Monday. Beat the book hard and have a great weekend, my friend. You as well, Mike.